us Aussie four-wheel drivers had one dream. It'd be to escape the daily grind and drive as far away to a place of white beaches and perfect waterfront camping, where the fishing and the beers are on tap. It is like a postcard up here. Sometimes, though, just such a place can be hidden right under your nose, like here at the amazing Morton Island. We're here for the ultimate summer getaway and a special mission to grant the wish of some very, very deserving young four-wheel drivers. Righto, you're doing it. You're driving the 30. He's cooped it! Our adventure begins on the Morton Island Ferry, a 90-minute journey that takes you from the heart of Brisbane and across the bay to a totally different world. Ahead of us lies three days jam-packed full of fishing, wheeling and beach camping. And being the salty sea dogs that we are, we've soon found our way into the helm. Well, I've got to say, mate, this is a sight that I love. Yeah, Just Morton yeah. Island is right there. We've got the vehicles, obviously, on the ferry. Mate, I'm ready to go. I <laughs> In fact, when they called me up to steer, I thought, no, we'll give Sean a go because he likes boats more than yeah, me. But exactly right, mate. I've got a four and a half metre fish nipper, so I've got this. <laughs> you going to put the brakes on soon or do you just hit it? How does that work? No, nah, just jam it straight in. Straight in? Yeah, nice, mate. nice. That's how Sean drives. Yeah, be good that's exactly right. We've been hearing reports of some possible wild weather on its way to the island over the next few days. But for now, what's more concerning is that we've got Sammy Hitsky in the convoy. And somehow, he's pinched the keys to the immaculate Ultimate 9 GU Patrol. How accurate is this? It's already on 18. I reckon Sammy ought to stick the fishing up. Where we... <laughs> it's not working. Now, I don't know how he's managed to borrow Pete's pride and joy, but I do know he's going to have a blast. And with the ferry about to drop us off on the beach, we're all soon airing down as well. And with Morton Island being 100% a sand island, we're going straight down to 18 PSI. And just like that, the city is left far behind and paradise is right up ahead. How good is this, Graham? <laughs> How good does it feel, mate? I love this place, I really do. This is the go. I love it. Every time I get on the sand down here at Morton, mate, absolutely frothing. I'm pretty excited to be taking point on this one too, mate. It's a good looking convoy back there. Well, apart from second in line, it's a good looking convoy. I saw a kayak on Sammy's roof. I know I've got a fishing rod in here, mate. I want to have a bit of a plan of attack, mate, because I've got a bit of a mission for this trip. It's not just all fun and games, mate. I'm looking for a few different items of seafood, and we've got to sort of go around the island to collect all these ingredients, I'm thinking. Get it all together, and we're going to have one mean feed. Well, mate, I'll tell you what, I'll take control of the squid, the flathead, the oysters, and the sand crabs I'll get later tonight. Mate, if you just catch one of those things, I was, I was going to actually get you to be in charge of the oysters, mate, because those ones, you, you just have to pay money and you'll get them down the, down the <laughs> southern end of the island. So if you could take care of that. Is now a good time to point out the amount of chat you've thrown, Graham. You didn't even bring a fishing rod. I got a phone call from you last night saying, could I bring one for you? Mate, if I was to get my tackle out and show you what I usually <laughs> use, you blokes wouldn't even bother. <laughs> Catching a seafood feast might be one of our objectives for the trip, but right now we've got other fish to fry. You see, we've got to catch up with some mates of ours who've trekked all the way across the island to meet us. And we're due to catch up with them a little further north at the next township. For this trip, I'm back in my trusty Isuzu D-Max, which I've fitted with some new lights from Hardcore, along with some new wheels from Dynamic Wheels. While Sean's 30 is looking pretty schmick with a brand new alloy canopy. Joining us for this adventure, of course, is Ruben from DMW in his Weapon of a 200 series followed by Tony from Hardcore, who's brought along this mint little off-road camper trailer. Bryce is joining us again from Fulcrum Suspensions, along with Jeremy from Direction Plus, and he's kitted out Weekender. Australia is having a La Nina summer this year, and the rain never seems to be too far off, with the occasional rainstorm blasting through. But while conditions are getting a little grey, spirits couldn't be higher as we head up to meet our newest members of the convoy. The legends we're meeting today are Brittany, Luke and Tyrone, who've made a wish to come out wheeling with us for the day and have a ride in the four-wheel drive 24-7 rigs. They're here with family and friends and they're going to make a day of it over on the north side of the island. With all that rain about, I've got a feeling that today could be pretty interesting. Mate, 
Tyrone's uh, he's, he's had really? a couple of uh, he's had a couple of decent decisions made about you, and he's been spot on. Don't with every listen to one him. Of them. Every single one of them, mate. <laughs> that'll be right. That'll be right. What are you thinking, mate? We're keen right, to do man. a couple of uh, water splashes if we can find them. Nah, no, copy that. Copy that. I've got a spare seat in here. There's a big splash on your left, mate. But I suggest you don't do that one. Hopefully, there's no rolling the car today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's sure he's gonna go through He'll that. probably get scared, let's be fair. Well, he's scared always. He's, always he's a bit scared. of a chicken, here. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I agree. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and what car do you have, Brittany? My Nissan Navara. Oh, yes. And where are you going in December? To Glasshouse Mountains. Wow. And they're going to call me the rollover one, hey? <laughs> <laughs> you wait till you see Brittany out there. <laughs> haven't rolled it yet. Now, Morton isn't exactly known for its tough wheeling, but after a wet week, the water crossings can get a little bit hectic, and this one up ahead is looking pretty darn deep. And then, we go down. See you later. What do I have to do this? Pretty deep. Would be one of the deeper water crossings we've ever done if we attempt that. We'll, we'll ride through that. You're going to be able to run a week side if you come with me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now the last thing I want to do is flood the Dirty 30, so I'm prepping the Max Tracks recovery gear in advance, in case I need a quick pull out backwards. Get a bit of recovery gear ready. Now, pretty confident about this one. I did go and test it, it's about that deep. So, super, super deep, but it does pay to be prepared. It does. Don't want to embarrass myself or the Dirty 30. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Just in case. Just in case. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, we're right. We're right. <laughs> I should get ready. Well, holy heck, there's deep and then there's that. That's pretty deep. She's deep! That is wild. The 30 might be many things, but she's not waterproof. Watch your thongs, though, go ahead. What's the plan here? I don't know. Did you get any water in? <laughs> yes. Just all of it. <laughs> I could go a little harder. Yeah, then you might get stuck stuck. Yeah. It's really deep. It's proper deep. I might have to go around that. Taking a sideline can be a risk in itself as the last thing you want is to find one side of the vehicle in a deep rut. Deep. But in this case, we've seen to made it through okay. Oh, how good. Easy. <laughs> we've sent the guinea pig in, and the guinea pig come out soaking wet, and there's water all through the cab of the Dirty 30. Which, if you're gonna get water in a vehicle, that's the one to get water in. In my opinion, it needs a bit of a wash inside anyway, and I think we've done a good job at that. It's nice and clean now. Yeah. What are your radio chances at? Out of 10. Zero. Him. Oh, here we go. Oh. Him 10. Us zero. Yeah. Oh, that's harsh. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah, nothing but confidence in here. <laughs> we'll try and go as deep as we can, hey look. <laughs> well this is pretty exciting because I know how deep this is. Ruben doesn't want to go around, he wants to go through the middle. And I don't blame him, big 37 inch tyres and I think if he commits, he's either going to make it or he's going to get proper stuck in the middle. So it's a really risky manoeuvre, but there's a bike who's going to set a coconut to do it, I reckon it's Ruben. Ruben, we're unsure of your chances in here mate. Well mate, there's no fun of being high and dry, we're going to go swimming and see how far we can get. Good luck, mate. <laughs> oh, he's just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting a shower. <laughs> awesome. <Good> splash. <laughs> Woo. Over the roof. <laughs> just pummeled through that. Oh, we went down the window too quick and I got a nice muddy shower. <laughs> Well, Ruben has absolutely nailed that. It could be a hard act to follow. Thanks, 
Let's go! The other boys have opted for a slightly less heroic line. They've made it through no dramas. Jeremy's gone straight for the deep line and luckily that rig has a backward facing snorkel because the water is practically over the roof. Ooh, there's a bit of water in here. Okie dokie, that just leaves Sammy. Well, it's not as deep now, he took half the water with him. How good is that? <laughs> well, big Sammy's gonna have a crack through the middle line, I do believe. Should get through, piece of cake. Twin lock, 35's, no weight in it. We'll see how he goes. I think he's a bit nervous, to be fair. Sean O's giving him some words of encouragement. You don't drive it, you're soft. Hey, sorry mate, if you're watching this, I didn't egg him on. Um, Sammy just really wanted to drive it, and uh, he's gonna give it a go. If there's such a thing as famous last words, those could just be it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's cooped it! Go backwards! She off! Now getting stuck in deep water is bad enough, but I've got a feeling something more sinister is going on. Now, I've just stopped. Lost power. What actually happened here, of course, is Sammy has hit the water a little bit too fast, probably because of my advice, and water's gotten through the snorkel and it's actually cut out the engine. We jump straight onto the run, but in short order, the big GU is out of the water. Wet. I'm pretty sure that amount of water in the cab is a good thing. If I had to guess. Massive shout out to Ultimate 9 for letting me use their car. At this stage, I'd like to apologise. This is a little bit of a negative situation. Um, airbox is full of water. So I reckon a bunch of water coming through the snorkel. Staying in the airbox and I think it's shut off. Hopefully, it hasn't done any significant damage. Yeah, we might just pull it apart here and just check inside. Sam, we had to stick the fish in. <laughs> <laughs> They're no good at this full driving stuff. Damn, that's some harsh criticism there, Sammy. What can I say? Bad luck, mate. Luckily for us, we've got plenty of tools, and these old patrol motors aren't too difficult to get into. So we crack right on with some repairs. I think we found the problem. Now, it's only there. Meant to have water in them, yes. This is the new water cooled model. Yes, excellent. Roger, got that. Excellent. So everything's um, performing as normal. Uh, situation normal. Uh, Carry on. Yes, we all know the end of that. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. So, Brittany, yeah. you know how you love the Dirty 30? Yes. Well, you drive a nap, right? And Nissan. Yes. And you love Nissan. Yes. What would make the Dirty 30 better? <laughs> With a Nissan badge. Oh, I reckon so. What do you, what do you reckon? <laughs> we put this on the Dirty 30 somewhere. Yeah. Come with me, quick. <laughs> this, I reckon, will fit perfectly in the snorkel. <laughs> so if you can just hold the knife and the one zippy, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> what do you reckon of that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even going to notice that. <laughs> Let's hope not for a while. What we're trying to do here is just pull the uh, glow plugs out so we can crank it over. Hopefully if there's any water left inside the cylinder, we'll come squirting out. Look, well, we've just been chatting with the boys. Uh, we've got a new design, it's called Submarine Sammy. I can sink anything you've got, just come and see me. Straight <laughs> to the bottom. You quickly learn on four-wheel drive 24-7 trips that too many tools is never enough. And we seem to be missing the one that we need to get the job done. So we've done everything we can at the moment. We've got right down to the glow plugs. We can't pull them out because we don't have the right size tool to get in there. Like a glow plug remover would be fantastic. Or a 13 deep socket might even fit down there. But at this stage, we can't get the glow plugs out. So, bit of a problem. Could be a, uh, could be a 200 versus the GU towing test all the way to the south end of the island at this point. We'll see how we go. We'll keep persevering. With plenty of hands on the tools, Ruben's taken over chefing duties once again. And in no time, has the DMW kitchen whipped out and lunch frying up. Meanwhile, things are getting a little creative over in the GU camp. So we're gonna try and make a bit of a custom tool here. We're gonna to make a, a 12 and a half. It's got the body of a 13 with the, the head of a 12. Very bizarre, very specialized tool. 
just as we we're going full MacGyver on the problem, the camera crew have come to the rescue with a kit they probably didn't know existed, which was stashed under a mountain of camera gear. Finally got the right tool. We we're looking for a deep socket 13. We were grinding down impact sockets and all sorts of stuff. And then we realized the camera car's got a tool kit. Camera car saves a day. All right. This is the moment of truth, this one. Will it go or will it tow? I think we're in luck. I think we're in luck. That's just pure fuel coming out of there. I can smell fuel. Yeah, 100% fuel. I can smell fuel. So, I'm not much of a mechanic, but uh, people are saying good things, which is making me feel a little bit better. All good, Peter. All right. All right, let's back this back together. When things don't go to plan, it's nice to know you've got mates around who'll jump in and make the best of it. And Tony is no exception. Lunch is soon on the go, and a broken Forby isn't about to ruin the day. After a bit of hard yakka, the intake is coming back together, and we'll see if the big GU will live to fight another day. <laughs> That was pretty impressive. We got that whole thing fixed up just under an hour. Haven't lost any time. Folks have had an absolute blast out here. Sammy's looking a little sheepish, and so he should, but I reckon we'll get everyone packed up, get back on the track, head south. Well, our new mates have managed to pack in some wheeling, some stuff-ups, repairs, and even a trackside cook-up into the day, which I reckon makes for a pretty quintessential four-wheel drive 24-7 day. And most importantly, it looks like they've had a blast. Well, Jeremy, I reckon you and I, mate, we did the uh, best gallant effort out of everybody. What do you reckon? I reckon we did too. Everyone kind of uh, washed out and went around the long way and we were the only ones that went through the middle. Sammy gave it a good go, but he didn't quite get there. Hey, Lukey, what have you got to say to Sammy, mate? You need to learn to drive better. <laughs> harsh but fair, mate, harsh but fair. <laughs> I reckon I've got a bit of a part to play in why Sammy drove the hard line. <laughs> I don't regret it for one bit. Sean, I've got some insider information in here, mate, with regards to your first drive. Apparently you um, were shaking like a uh, like a small schoolgirl. <laughs> Did she tell you about the tears? <laughs> she didn't mention the tears, but she said the sobbing was getting on her nerves. Yeah, apologies for that. We've also got some information in this car oh, as well, mate. That's true. Heck, I forgot we swapped. Yep. Um, anyway, it's been a great day and uh, the weather's held off. <laughs> We're all really lucky, I think. Yeah, we've had a bit of a discussion who the better Suck driver it. is <laughs> between you and me, Graham, and it's unanimous in here, mate. I don't think I need to know the answer to that. Let's just say you come a really close second. <laughs> I made up a phrase several years ago. You've all heard it. Sucking the guts out of life. Well, no, you're doing it. You're driving the 30. <laughs> Well, I reckon Brittany's got that one down pat. This is amazing. My partner's gonna be jealous. Yeah, He's that's like, cool. Sean, Sean, I won't let you drive this car. It's been an awesome day out on the tracks with these legends, but sadly for us, it's time to head back and drop them at the ferry. I'm stoked to say that all the kids told us this was one of the best days of their lives, and we couldn't have been more stoked to share it with them. The Make-A-Wish Foundation has made over 10,000 wishes for Aussie wish kids come true over the past 35 years. And you can support their amazing work by donating at the link below. I was complaining she was a bit down on horsepower, and now I understand. Didn't even realise that. Was that you? <laughs> Making a wish come true for a sick child can be absolutely life-changing for both them and their families. And we look forward to the opportunity to support Make-A-Wish long into the future. Well, I don't know about you folks at home, we have had an absolute blast of a day. I want to say a huge thank you to Sammy Hitsky. Where is he? Has he even made it? He's not even, he's not even showing his face. I think he's, he's stuck at the beach, mate. Everyone, what would you think of your day? You enjoyed it? Yeah. Good fun? Amazing. How'd you go driving that car? You okay? You're not shook? No. You good? I had some badges, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolute stitch up. Absolute high stitch five. up. High five, Brittany. Thank you so much for today. Yep, it's been an absolute it. ripper of a day. Good on you. After all that fun, I reckon it's high time we push on and find ourselves a campsite. 
And for that, we've got a little spot lined up down the southern end of Morton Island. The sand around these parts can get pretty soft once it's seen some traffic, and setting up your vehicle right is super important. Hot little tip, those of you that haven't done a whole heap of beach or sand driving, obviously, tyre pressure's a big one. I've got my Bridgestones down to 18 PSI. Now, the beaches along here at low tide, they're quite hard, there's not a problem, but on some of these inland tracks, like I'm on right now, they're soft, but they've also got some very distinct tyre channels in them. By sticking in the ruts, you're not forcing any new sand in front of your tyre, thus it's so much easier to drive. Saving on fuel, it's better for the entire track, it's much more comfortable, and it does mean you will not get stuck anywhere near as easily, pretty much stay in these ruts, and it makes it so much easier on the beaches. Now, I mentioned that rain was on the horizon, and suddenly, it seems like the heavens have opened. Conditions are looking a little different as we hit the southern end of Morton and search for our first fishing ingredient and camp. Hey, does this look familiar to you, this, this part down here? Yeah, it sure does. This is where I sort of pinpointed, um, hopefully I'd be able to get one of my ingredients, mate. Maybe a couple of floodies around these uh, mangroves. Yeah, copy that. Well, I think there's some nice little campsites just down around the corner down here, mate. Look at the mangroves, they're all through here. What do you reckon we uh, we find a spot? Yeah, a camp around here would be good because this tide, it might be able to get the crab traps out as well. All right, sick. I'll keep my eye out, mate. We'll find a campsite. Soon enough, we found a spot and it's going to take more than a bit of rain to dampen our spirits. Yeah, everyone thinks it's all beer and Skittles when we go camping, but sometimes, you know, the heavens open up and... Just beer. There's no Skittles. <laughs> There's no Skittles, just beer. There will be a lot of beers in a second because it's raining a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. Now, Graham unfortunately lost his awning after a hectic run on the thousand buck track, but he's looking a little bit regretful that he didn't fit a spare. Meanwhile, Bryce seems to be all over the conditions. Just, just uh, digging a trench, you know, to stop the water from going in the, the swag. So um, I'm just trying to veer it off to Shorno there, so he's gonna, you know, you can have a nice uh, shower or bath in the morning. And once that's sorted, happy days. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. Oh, there we go. I reckon I might cheers, buddy. Knock the top off the Captain Frothy. Oh, how good is that? <laughs> have a go, the boys, mate. No one's deterred. No, nah, they're, all, they're all setting up. And this is sort of test your camping setup if you are really well. Anyone can t can camp when it's in nice. ideal conditions. When it gets a little inclement. Exactly right. That really tests out the quality of your camp setup. I reckon I might finish this beer, mate. Yep. I might even get the crab pots. I reckon we walk them out. Take them for a walk. Yeah, for sure. And uh, maybe we'll get a fire going under one of the awnings or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Cook up a feed, have a couple of brewskis. Oh, sounds Doesn't like a good night, better. mate. Sounds like a good night. Just when we're setting up for a wet night, the clouds roll away and a perfect sunset looks like it's on the cars. Just goes to show, you got to be in it to win it. And beers on the beach is the perfect way to celebrate. <laughs> beach to ourselves, camp just metres away. Pretty darn good if you ask me. Our first target for our seafood feast is some crabs. And for that, we're going to need to set the crab pots up overnight with some bait that Sammy's pre-packed for purpose. The aim is to drop them right out in some deep enough water, ideally where the sand meets a bit of weed. What we're targeting here are sand crabs, or blue mana crabs, depending on what part of Australia you live in. Now these tasty little crustaceans are pretty prolific around Morton Bay, and hopefully we can get a couple for our feed. Unlike Fraser, campfires are usually permitted on Morton, and the boys have soon got the drifter fire pit whipped out and a fire cranking. We've got a heck of a lot planned for the next few days, but for now it's time to kick back and enjoy a cold one with some good mates. Morton, hey? How good is it? Conditions are still a little drizzly this morning, but that's not going to put a dampener on our plans, because we've got a cracking day ahead. 
Sammy, of course, is a keen fisho, and he's a good bloke to have around if you want to catch a feed. And he soon spotted signs of another ingredient that we're going to need for our seafood feast tonight. So as you can see, it is a low tide. At high tide, this is all underwater. But this is where we're going to be chasing floodies. And just having a quick look around to see if I can see where they're lying. That's what we're looking for. That's got a bit of weed in it, but that's what we call a flathead lie. Bit of a kind of diamondy shaped thing, but that's where the flathead nestles into the sand. The cool thing is, if you find them from the tide before, there's a fair chance they're going to come back there uh, that following tide. So that's a good sign. I'm going to be casting here, and I'm not going to tell Sean that that was there. While we wait for the tide to head in, we've got a job to get into, and that's to check the crab pots. It's always a bit touch and go catching these little fellas, and at first we look to be off to a shaky start. Exactly zero. But after a few more traps, it looks like we've got a few, at least. Oh, you got one. Oh, that's a female. Right, I checked my pot. We've got quite a few crabs, but only two males, the rest are females. Blue swimmer crab, that's the only one that I reckon will be legal. You can tell the males, so this is a female. It's got the wide flap at the bottom. This guy's got the narrow one. Also, you see the color difference. Males are all bright colored. Females are lighter brown, but that's the one. The boys are coming in. I'm hoping they've got the goods as well. Sean, do you have the goods? Yeah. We got heaps, <laughs> heaps of them, heaps. Any males? No. I think so. No males. Oh, suck. We walked about three kilometres out to sea to catch that one crab, which you're not going to put on money for. We've got a couple others, but that is where its size are all females. Yeah. That's our... Well, I don't even know if he's size yet. I'm going to put a rule on to double check. All right, moment of truth. Crab measure. You've got to measure notch to notch. This determines whether we're having crab with our feast or not. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a no. No. Undersize. No crabs. We'll catch him next year. Here in Queensland, we've got some pretty strict rules that help keep the crab population protected. And unfortunately this time, they might be off the menu. But that's okay, because we've got some other options on the list to get on with. Those with a keen eye probably noticed that the whole setup has changed on the Dirty 30. So I thought I'd take a second to show you around it because this has been a bit of an idea that was born in Cape York last year and I was talking around the campfire with Ruben and we wanted to come up with a lightweight solution for the Dirty 30 because when I built it, obviously it had a uh, steel tray and a steel dog box, it worked an absolute treat, but the weight was starting to get up there and it was getting very, very close to its GVM. So we sort of went to the drawing board. Ruben had a new prototype alloy canopy and tray and I've seen him abuse his one and it's super strong and I thought maybe that is a solution. So as you can see, there's a brand new alloy tray and canopy. Now, there's two things that are worth noting about this setup. Number one is I've got a heap more storage space. So I've got under tray toolboxes, I've got a big slide out trundle tray drawer, as well as a big water tank, I've got a big fuel tank. Everything's really accessible, but the cool thing is I've actually saved about 300 kilos. So it's a lot lighter setup. More storage and lighter, that's a double win in my books. Very excited about this setup, and I reckon it doesn't just work really well, but it looks super cool as well. So I might get this packed up before the rain comes in, and hopefully we can make a mile and catch a couple of fish today. With just a day left to get a dinner feed sorted, we're splitting up the convoy for the morning, with a few of the boys heading south in search of some tucker. Right down the bottom end of Morton is a secluded little hideaway that provides the perfect breeding ground for our next ingredient, Morton Bay Rock Oysters. And luckily for Graham, somebody's already done the hard yards to catch them. Wade is a former cattle farmer and butcher who spent more than 20 years in the oyster business. And he's been cultivating some of the finest oysters you'll ever get your hands on right here on Morton Island. Mate, I've been challenged with the hardest part. See, what we're doing over here is we're doing a seafood cooker. 
Beautiful. So far we failed, didn't we? We put the crab pots out, you didn't get any crabs. But I guaranteed them I could catch a few oysters. Well, we've caught some. You have, but I, this, this utterly fascinates me, man. How does this all, how do you farm a bloody oyster? Yeah, it's interesting, actually. We put these slats out. Yep. We smash these out and we put them in billets. So we build billets up like this. Yep. We put them out in the water and oysters are like coral. So they spawn every year. Yep. The oysters spawn every year. The larvae wants a home. We've built them a home. Right. They put their foot down, then they build the shell. Yep. So then we come along, pull the catches out. Yep. Bring them in, give them a twist, and you've got oysters. And that well, stuff there is a baby oyster. That's right. It looks like gravel. Yeah, it does. And there's does. All, all different sizes in there. So we'll, we'll knock all that off. And Crazy. Then we'll, we'll run it through the grater, put it out in bags, and then three years later you're eating it. Well, I'll tell you what, I think probably the next part of this process for me, could we shuck a couple and try a few fresh off the old, uh, what do you call them, off the rock, off the bag, off the boat, off the barge, off the... Processing room. Call that processing room, yeah. <laughs> Let's go and have a couple of oysters. All right. It's not force. It's just a matter of getting in the right spot. Technique. Yep. Wiggle. Yep. To the side. Yeah, that. That. Yep. Put your knife under. Uh, right. Righto, boys. Grab yourselves an oyster. The chucking challenge has begun. <laughs> oh, the race is on. Oh, crikey. Watch your eyes. There we go. Oh. <laughs> it's the glove! It's the glove, it's not me! Let's have a look at that. Is that past muster? Yeah, that's a well shucked oyster. Have you wrecked that one too? No, nah, mate, she's a beauty. Oh, she's struggling. There is only one way to eat oysters, in my humble opinion. There's a whole heap of different ways you can prepare oysters. Only one way to eat them. First, give them a little tickle, just tell them that you love them, and then. Every year I say it. The best oysters I've ever had. You can feel them right down to your toes. I feel like I'm stronger. <laughs> so I still can't open one. <laughs> I can eat them. <laughs> All right. Well, a couple of dozen oysters wrangled. Something tells me we got the easier part of the job here. Even though I had to shuck an oyster, I'll tell you what, that is gruelling work. We've got the oysters, and I've got a special thing for the boys tonight too with those oysters. Wait till they see that. Let's check back. See if those guys have caught any fish. Back in our stretch of the island, the tide is rolling in. Our lines are out in force and the fish are biting. Yeah, boy. First fish. Oh, he's, he'd, he'd be nearly close. That's not too bad. That was second cast. A little bit too small, this one. So we're going to let him go. Hopefully we can get a couple of bit bigger ones. He's having a go. <laughs> he's having a go, all right. Big one. That is definitely an ingredient. Happy days, happy days. There we go, it's starting to come together. Two to me, zero to Sammy. I guess uh, Morton Island is not his island. Now, look, it's not like Sammy and I have any rivalry when it comes to fishing. Three nil. But beating him on the scoreboard, once and for all, would be a good thing. And so far, so good. And the comeback starts. Little tacker but I've been informed that it's a numbers game and that's the start. Just wanted to touch base with you guys real quick and just let you know that that's the equaliser, number five. Little buddy, little buddy. That is seven six. <laughs> Leader. As it turns out, Sammy's not too bad at catching fish, but he just doesn't have it in him to catch the big ones. So that's where I come in. Good fish. Lovely yes. fish, mate. That there is a prime eater. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Well, there you go. That's uh, maybe seven all. We've sort of lost count. There's a couple of good ones in amongst it. So, little seafood uh, feast tonight. Well, it's getting better. With our quota of good size flatties bagged, it's time to make tracks and head down to meet up with Graham before he eats half of his catch. Hey, Graham, copy, mate. you got to be kidding me, mate. How's your timing? You got a flatty? <laughs> Did I ever, mate? Did I ever? They call me the new flatty master of Morton. Speaking of ingredients, mate, if I smell a bit fishy, it's because I've been right in there with the oysters, mate. We've got plenty to go around. Ah, oh, how good. It's coming together, boys.
With dinner on board, it's time to hit up our next destination, the remote southeast corner, where you'll find some stunning coast and great swimming. You know, heck, a lot of you guys ask questions regularly about suspension. What suspension should I get for my four-wheel drive? Well, you know, I've been running fulcrum suspension in all my rigs now for a few years. And one thing I like about it, and I've got no hesitation in recommending it, is that it's at a very good price, meaning that it's affordable, but more importantly, it gets the job done. So it doesn't matter if I'm driving a place like this in Morton Island or right up in Cape York, my suspension works and it doesn't break the bank. If you ask me, when you're trying to modify a four-wheel drive, the last thing you want to do is blow all your budget on one component because you want to spread that around the whole vehicle to make it capable and to come to places just like this. And how's that for a spot? Bloody magical. This little number is one of several hidden gems on the island and well worth a visit. After a hard morning on the tools, not a bad way to freshen up. Well, this here is Mirror Pool, right down the south end of the island. It's actually changed a little since I was here last. I think it's shrunk in size ever so slightly, but have a look at the boys, they're loving it in there. Having a bit of a swim. It's actually fresh water, so it's really quite inviting. Woo! <laughs> the entire east coast of Morden Island is one immense beach run and at low tide it's possible to drive from one end of the island to the other on the beach. But right now the tide is heading in again so we're going to be ducking inland to make our way north where we've got a cracking camp planned and of course a cook up of our freshly caught dinner. After a few hours of inland touring and with the tide receding again we're back on the eastern beach, ready to roll out canvas and enjoy a well-earned beer. Mate, I was talking to a bloke just the other day in a car park, funnily enough, told him I was going to Morden, and he gave me his secret campsite, mate. <laughs> I've never seen it before, but I reckon we're going to check it out. What do you say? I'd say that you probably speak to a few blokes in car parks, mate, but I, I like the idea of that. A secret campsite on Morton, mate. It's got my ears standing up. I've got no promises, but let's go and check it out, mate. And I reckon we've got just enough ingredients, but you, sir, well, I was gonna use the word chef. You're cooking anyway. <laughs> mate, it's gonna be a Morton Island smorgasbord. I like the sound of that, mate. Sun's going down. Roll out a bit of canvas, crack a can. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. Count me in, mate. All the campsites on this side of the island are hidden away behind the shelter of a few coastal trees. And this one right here is a bit of a perler with enough room for the whole convoy. How mad is this? Blue skies, beach just over there, absolutely stunning weather at the moment. Just setting up camp, the rooftop tent's about to go up, about to get myself a nice cold beer. Oh, this is living, guys. I gotta say, Graham wasn't half wrong about this campsite. Pretty bloody spectacular. Little hot tip though, when it comes to setting your camp up, normally I'm the first one to grab the fridge out. Not today. Set the camp up first, get the fridge out second, crack a beer, number three. Camp is done, enjoy your beer properly. I reckon that's the best way to camp. You can always tell the measure of a man by the first thing he does when he gets into camp. Grab yourself a cold beer and watch everyone else get set up. I'll worry about mine later. Don't you worry about that. Now there's a controversial question for you folks. Beer first or set up first? Let us know in the comments. Tony. How you oh, going man? Good mate, I just, I can't believe how quick you set this thing up. I hey. mean, I just finished mine. I've got a pretty basic setup and the whole camp is set. Yeah, we're not mucking around. I just want to go and have a look mate because I didn't think it had a kitchen in it for one because I thought it was too small for that. You got a full kitchen, you got a Weber barbecue. You got sink, you got heaps of storage, massive pantry area. Mate, anywhere two to four people, this thing is set to jet. It Mate, is good to go. That's super cool because you don't sort of get that idea. It's such a compact trailer. It tows so easy. It's super lightweight, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So under 1,300 kilos dry, but you can load her up to just under two ton. That's got me thinking as well. I need to cook a bit of a meal tonight and I need a bit of preparation space. We've got a fair bit going on tonight. So definitely. So if you don't mind, 
I might Make come and see car, so my friend. <laughs> that's a go. That's a go. You shouldn't say that too loud. I, I noticed a fridge at the back. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mate, we have got the flagship of Mike Ullman. That's the big one. It's a 96 litre. I can't believe how much you can fit in this trailer. Dead yeah. set. You just assume it's a very compact trailer, which it is, but the fact you've got storage all around it, you don't have a water tank, do you? Oh yeah, definitely. 180 litres. 180 so litres. I suppose at that weight as well, you'd be pretty confident towing it just about anywhere, wouldn't oh, you? 100%. Built to go to the cave and to come home. So anything you can throw your vehicle at, this thing will just tag along behind. So it's set up to not just be comfortable, but obviously very practical off-road as well. Easy to tow, take it just about anywhere. Yeah, definitely. Unreal. Well, I'm just gonna have a quick squeeze in here, mate. Have mm. you hiding any? Oh, you it's, are uh, too. You yeah. are. It's that time of day, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Tony, cheers, yep. mate. No thank worries. you, thank you for the car one, mate. Oh, I'm gonna um, get a fire going and uh, no doubt I'll be back pretty soon. Definitely, let's <laughs> get some wood and get it happening. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's another cracking day on Morton done dusted. If this place isn't on your list for a visit, it really should be. And things are about to get better because my chef hat is ready to go. Well, a bit nervous tonight because Chef Whale has tasked me with looking after the entrees for tonight's smorgasbord. So I've got something a bit special for the boys. We're going to make oyster shooters. Yes, you heard me right. Oyster shooters. First things first, that right there is a cup of Morton Bay's finest oysters. One per cup. Here we go. If we've got any left over, I might even double them up. There might be some lucky guys that get two. I reckon there's going to be. I reckon we can double up. We're going two oysters per cup, folks. Now, a serve of V8 spicy vegetable juice. Oh yeah, that looks pretty darn good, but it would not be a shooter without something just a little bit naughty. So, oh well, you could maybe use some vodka, just because you're gonna make it a little bit something special. We're gonna go a little bit of Tabasco in each one. Just a couple of drops. And then, because we get gourmet, Sean and I, you're going to want to stir that around and mix it up. You could use your finger, you could use a stick, you could use a spoon. Uh-uh, we ain't doing that. Here we go. A couple of stirrers. Now, the idea behind the celery, of course, is so you can stir all the ingredients before you gulp it down. So, boys, come and have a go. <laughs> Sean, I grab anyone you like, mate. I don't care. Which anyone is, you like? Which is the best one? Anyone? I haven't spiked anything. There's nothing spiked Oh, you can here. tell he's got a little oyster oh, boy Jeremy? in the bottom. Yes. Give it a stir, boys. Yep. Oh, a little, look at that. Look at that. A couple of oysters. If that doesn't float your boat, I mean... Here's to oyster shooters, boys. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Get them into you. The seafood Cheers. feast begins. It does. Cheers, mate. Here we go. <laughs> Very tasty. I tell you what. That's a great way to start the old seafood banquet. Um, yeah, over to you, mate. All right, let's get the main course on the go. You boys yep. want to sit around the fire. I need to do my stretches. Yeah. Mine in a hand as well. I've got this. I'm limited up after two oysters <laughs> and one of those. <sighs> that was fabulous. Thank you very much. A bit of lead in your pencil, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got to be honest with you. It's not every day you get to commandeer a camper trailer like this to make a mean feed. And it's not every day Graham does an entree. So I'm thinking, all right, first course, Got a little bit of iron jack. Second course, I'm going to do Kilpatrick oysters and then straight into the old seafood banquet. I reckon cool. that will be us. Oyster shooters, mate. They're not for everyone. <laughs> They're not for everyone, mate. I see everyone lying down over there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a yeah, heck of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a tidal wave going through camp. A couple of oysters. Anyway, what are we doing, mate? Kilpatrick, because I. Couple, oh, couple, couple, you didn't tell me that. Boy, couple of the boys say they really prefer Kilpatrick oysters. You said it was straight into pasta. It was going to be, but then you just you know come up with the entree. Yeah, you tried to one up me. And I was like, you know what? I've got to match this. Oh, I've got to match this. So. I'd known that I would have put three oysters in each shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can fire this up. Yep, I'll go. get some bacon on the go. Let me go. Muck around you got to keep moving it. Now, the whole thing with Kilpatrick, it's really easy to make. So the oysters are the hardest thing to gather. Now, you got your hands on some oysters today. I did, mate, down at the Morton Bay uh, Oyster Park. Three million they've got down there. Three million In the lease oysters. right now, there's three million oysters. I reckon we had about a third of those. We really did. <laughs> We've had a yeah. go. This one here is a bit of barbecue sauce. Squeeze her in there, mate. Don't be shy. Probably like, like a good old squeeze. Like That's what you're looking for. Yep. 
All right, a bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Again, there's no measurements really. Well, there is if you're if you're doing it for real, but that's enough, I reckon. <laughs> for real, what are we doing? We're just having a go, right? And I guarantee it'll taste pretty good. It looks good. We'll basically put that mixture on top of the oysters. They go on the grill on top of the fire pit. Right, I'm actually so stoked. We've got this part of the night, and we've still got some oysters left. Just look at those. Those. Uh, dude. <sighs> these are some of the nicest Thank oysters you, you ever eat. This one is in the way. I'm going to eat this as well. You can't have another one. No, it's in the way. And there's right, one more in the way. There's, I'll, one, there's I'll, one more in the way as I'll well. I'll suck from this end. You go from that end. <laughs> no, there's a whole one for you. Where? Yeah. Oh, okay. If you don't like oysters or someone that's a bit squeamish about the look of an oyster, have a Kilpatrick. Yeah, you can. It's a gateway drug if you ask me. <laughs> Once you start on the Kilpatricks, you'll yeah, be on you'll the... Be raw dogging it before you know it. Raw dog before you know it. Yep. Grab that. Chuck, yes. chuck him on the boil. Got it. I've got these ones. Let's go. How yeah, good's this? They smell me. so good. They are unbelievable. They're very hot. Yeah, it's not mm, so good though. How is that? Is mm. that all right? Mm. They are better than you get at a restaurant. Mm. Hot though. <laughs> oh, I reckon we get the boys in to try those cool batteries because they are on but song. They are lovely, aren't they? On song. Why? Oh, they're fighting over them. They're fighting uh, over have them. Have a go, boys. Come on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. What yeah. do you reckon, boys? All right? Yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, beautiful. If that's what dinner's going to be like. Oh, dinner's going to be even better. Actually, we can't promise <laughs> you that. We can't well, promise you that. I've got one more here. No one's going to get it. Oh, did you? They are so mm. good, aren't they? So, what I'm doing here, yep. I've Talk got a little bit of onion on the go. Oh, that smells good already. I, think I know, I know. Now, I think it's going to complement it. So, basically, you've got They're some good. onions and some mushroom in there, a bit of olive oil. How many chilies do you want? Because I've got them all. <laughs> You're not going to put all those in there. Uh, probably not. Yeah, probably will. <laughs> do you want me to do the garlic or are you if, good? If you can do that, I'll just, I'll just notice the, the, I think the water's on the boil. Yep. So I'm going to put the pasta in there. Yep. Got a bit of linguine, mate. It's actually already pre-opened because the back of the 30, mate, it's been a rough ride. So this here is anchovies. Oh my God. And they're going to go in just like that. So this is pizza, pizza sauce. I know. No, I, I, don't, know. I don't dig this bit. Well, Sammy reckons it's the go. It's basically like a like a tomato paste. Can not, we get Sammy up thick. here just to, just to try and explain what? himself? What's the go with that, bro? It's just concentrate. <laughs> 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 it's not for everyone, mate. He's in front of camera stuff. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> we lost him. It's just concentrated. So well, like, what do you mean by that? A little bit goes a long way. Yeah. Uh -huh. You want to keep it nice and fresh, and that you just need a little bit. You don't need to overpower your pasta, just a light coating. Okay. Goes a long way. Okay. Sammy, so, what would you use in here as a fish? We're using flathead tonight. Anything. Flathead's unreal. Have yeah. you ever caught any flathead? Today? Well, if, if we were to say today, <laughs> let's just get, be clear. I caught one less than Sean. Now, that's the only time that's ever happened. One less. <laughs> How many keepers did you get? I caught one less than Sean. <laughs> we're going to add those tomatoes yeah. a bit later. I'm going to yeah. get the fish out now. I've basically, Flatty. yeah, we've, we've just we've filleted all the good flatties, skinned and we've uh, chopped them up into yep. small little pieces. Yep. Here we go. So th those flatty little pieces, and that's what we're dealing with that's here. A lot of flatty. It is actually quite a bit when you look at it like this. Just cubes of fish. Superb. They're just going to go in there. So normally, if I was doing the full seafood banquet, would have yeah. maybe a bit of squid, a bit of crab. That's you know fantastic. what I mean? However. We don't have any of that. We don't have any of that. We just got flathead. Because <laughs> yes. my shoulders are sore actually from carrying the team most of the day. Well, Sammy was supposed to get the crab, but we've got the, no crab. The only person that's let us down oh, on no. the team. He brought the crab traps, his mm -hmm. favourite crabbing spot, but... Anywho. That is looking absolutely sensational. Smelling good. It's I tasting wish good. I smell it, honestly. It, this is, might be one of the best cooks I've ever done. What are we doing I with think the that parcel? linguine is on the go. We yep. always forget to do this, but What's we need like? a way to drain that. Oh, man. You're going to have to use I the hate chopping this board. because I've got to go in the danger zone. I'm sorry about this. Oh, far out. Why do you have to? Hang on. My shorts are really tight. Come around the back of me. Yeah, but I can't. I've got to pull up my shorts. <laughs> All right, ready? Ready? <laughs> That's the lengths you go to for a good meal. <laughs> Not even weird. There we go. It's perfect. <laughs> shake it out. If it feels weird, shake it out. Always shake it out. <laughs> I think uh, I think they might have followed through, unfortunately. <laughs> As a chef, occasionally it gets intense. 
All right. Well, How we looking? It's looking unbelievable. Nice. That pass is That looks done. fantastic. That really does. Now we have to transfer that into that. Just pick it up. What's well, the matter with you? This is the hot side, mate. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, <laughs> born in WA, born in New South Wales. Yeah, Here right, eh, mate. How many flatheads did you get today? None, I was getting oysters. Yeah, look at that. Put that Put that all in. That is superb. So the pass is going in. You try not to stir it too much, you're going to break the fish right up. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That looks superb. That's looking really Holy good, isn't heck. It? I reckon we get the boys up. I'll go you first, mate. Uh, you would always. There you go. <laughs> that's the way. Look at that. Yep, that's some of my bit. foot that's, as well, yep. That's your bit of fish that's there. That's the way. What is this? I'm just making sure it's edible before I serve you boys. That's, mm, what, that's, that's the main thing. Holy moly. Look at that. Oh. Oh, that fish. Yeah, I mean, it's good that enough. Flathead, you can amazing. tell it's amazing. Sure. Yeah. It's hey. got a real deep sea taste Ooh. to it, to me. We have been all over Morton to try and make a seafood feast. Yeah, it's been a mission. It's been a bit of a mission. We've had the weather, you know, against, against at the start at least, but and now, and now we are here. Mm. Perfection. Mm. What do you reckon, Sammy? It needs a bit of crab, but it'll do. <laughs> 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 Only we knew someone. <laughs> Look at catch crab. You mm. can't just buy them, Graham. Well, this is true. Well, boys, there you go. That's the fourth and final course. That's absolutely lovely. I reckon we sit around the fire, boys. What do you reckon? Yep. Oh, Rip okay. our laughing gear around this stuff and... Uh, that is a true. The amount of effort we don't do, that, mm. that, it, it deserves a sit around the fire and cheers. That mm. is beautiful. It really does. For a day that started out empty-handed, I reckon we turned that one around pretty well. Day three on Morton Island, and our final day is looking like it'll be a perler. This would be the perfect spot to park up for a few days and settle back. But for us, we've got a ferry to catch later today, so we're going to be packing up camp. Like always, Reuben's never about to let the convoy go hungry. It's almost becoming a four-wheel drive 24-7 tradition for the DMW kitchen to be cranking with a hot brekkie in the morning. <laughs> Sammy is a really good mate of mine, so I think I can do this. He knows a heck of a lot about the ocean and fishing, more than Sean and I could ever hope to, but he knows nothing about cars or four-wheel drives. And I've noticed that he's been driving along in Ultimate One. I'm just gonna play a bit of a prank on him this morning. I'm just gonna crank this up. What the heck? Let's go all the way. <laughs> right, there you go. She's on ultimate nine. <laughs> I just want to see his reaction when he jumps in this thing this morning and takes off up the beach. <laughs> Speaking of tradition, there's another crew custom that Sammy has yet to experience. And I reckon today could be the day to initiate him. We just found out that one of the members of our campsite has a brand new camp cup. So when you get a new cup as part of your camping kit, one of the rules is with us, is someone in the group has to kick it. So, fortunately Sammy's got a new cup, and it's a great cup at that, but the boots are going on because it needs a kick. Just a tradition, we've been doing this for about eight years or so, and uh, every single cup has had at least one kick in its life. How's that coffee going, Sammy? My cup. We can't go until we kick it, unfortunately. I don't make the rules up. Well, this should kick pretty well, to be honest with you. It's got a nice weight about it. Check the wind. Here he goes. Yeah, that's a oh, good kick! Heck. That's a oh, good oh, kick! Oh, yes! Well yeah. done, Sammy. Go you get know. your cup. <laughs> that clears the sand. Yeah, that's a good yeah, kick. No, he got you it. You nearly hit the side. Second break. That was awesome. We'll just hit sweet right in the, right in the middle. Right. You didn't expect that. Oh, that, that was like. Right. A... Oh! <laughs> That'll still drink, though. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that's a big one. Yes! Oh, that's one of my better ones. <laughs> Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so you, look, and look, the good news is, as long as it still holds liquid, you, you're still in the game, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. And it didn't go in the sand, it went over. Yeah. It's ready to go again. No, it didn't, no foul, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't want, the, I don't want it happening. I don't want it happening to me. Someone <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no else got a brand new cup, do they? 
Nope. No. Uh, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> Told it back up in the road, I suppose. <laughs> Nobody mentioned I've got new underpants. <laughs> <laughs> With tradition served, the canvas is soon rolling away around camp as we get ready for another big day. Let's get this day started. Right, all right, all right. Phew. Let's do this, boys. Ooh. Right. Got a big go this morning. Yeah, I'll go and have a good sleep. Full of beans. Hey Graham, you got a copy there, mate? Yeah, buddy, sure do. Mate, I got a little little story for you. I um, jumped in the car this morning, took off, and uh, just about got pinned to the seat. <laughs> the old Ultimate Dine Truck's got a fair bit more pep this morning, and I think you have something to do with it. Mate, I sort of took a bit of a punt on saying that someone with the limited driving experience that you got off-road probably hadn't felt what a throttle controller could do before, so I thought, well, what better place to explain than chuck it in Ultimate Nine and get you on the beach? Mate, if you want to get somewhere with a bit of pep, I reckon nine is the way to go. She, uh, she's got some pick up and go, that's for sure. I'm gonna leave it on nine, it's good fun. <laughs> you enjoy, mate, you enjoy. The old classic throttle controller stitch up. When you jump in the vehicle and you're used to it on a certain setting and you've pumped it up, <laughs> you do get a bit of a surprise. Uh, they really do just take away any throttle lag and as soon as you put your foot down, you take off. Incredible difference. We might be booked on the afternoon's ferry to the mainland, but with a few hours up our sleeve, we're going to make the most of our time here and head out for a little more exploring. For our first stop of the day, we're ducking across the island on some of the inland tracks. And by the looks of things, there's plenty of water about. The beauty of Morton is that you can drive it from end to end in less than an hour, but it's still jam-packed full of spots to check out as you make your way around the island. Morton Island is the perfect place to dip your toes into the world of four-wheel driving. But as you start to build up your rig with accessories and weight, beach driving like this can really start to put pressure on factory components, which is something the guys at Direction Plus know exactly how to deal with. Hey, what's the biggest issue you reckon you face driving on the sand when it comes to things like cooling, etc., etc., mate? I reckon probably uh, overheating transmissions are, is probably a big one. Uh, of course, you've got lower tyre pressures and obviously the sand itself. Yeah, absolutely, and like obviously um, more load you put on our camper trailers, all the gear in the back and all the rest of it puts a hell of a lot of load on the transmission and all that load turns into heat. Probably the best thing to do is um, put on a, a aftermarket transmission cooler, like obviously the factory one was designed to to work with the car uh, under certain situations, but when you're asking uh, every little bit out of your car and then some more, putting a, a bigger cooler or additional coolers on your car is going to increase the surface area and, and obviously help control those temperatures. Preventative maintenance again, mate. Preventative maintenance. Two words we've seen a lot. Nah, it's going to get a little bit softer up here too, mate. So, um, yeah, let's get stuck into it, eh? Sounds like a plan. Get a load of this weather, will you? 30 seconds ago, you couldn't even see five foot in front of the vehicle. Now, beautiful blue skies. The ocean is flat and calm. Picture perfect. It is like a postcard up here. Morton offers camping and beach driving virtually everywhere around the entire island. And there's plenty of sightseeing and offer too, if that's what you're into. But for us, we've got a different plan. This wicked little spot is called Yellow Patch and it's the perfect spot to wait out the high tide and chill out as we wait for the ferry. In fact, I reckon there's even enough time to pull out the cricket set. And to be honest with you, I reckon it'd be un-Australian not to. Yeah, look, I reckon uh, probably open the batting today. 
kept that average of about 99.8 <laughs> up there. Can we get in the deep water? <laughs> <laughs> now look, when it comes to wheeling and fishing, I reckon we might just know a thing or two. But as for cricket, well, let's just say maybe we should stick to the Forbies. Still, if you want to see miss hits, missed catches, LBWs, leg buys, and a lot of wrong uns, <laughs> we got you covered. And with that, our Morton adventure is almost done and dusted. All that's left is to park up on the beach and enjoy a few final moments of this magical little patch of paradise. Folks, put this one on your list. It really is as good as it gets. Well, Shai, mate, that has been a trip that's put a smile on my dial. Oh, From there to here, mate. Absolutely, mate. Morton, you can't go wrong, full no. stop, but that to me is just one of the best Morton trips I've ever done. Morton steals the show for me. I love the place. It's it's amazing. Every time I come here, I, I'm reminded just yep. how cool it is. You can see Brisbane City lights, yep. yet over there, even in peak periods, it's not it's even that world. busy. It's another world, folks. If you haven't put Morton Island on your bucket list, I truly, truly ask you to do so. Well, mate, before I go and pump the tyres up, yep. I might have one last glimpse at Morton Island. Catch you around next time on Four Wheel Drive 24-7. See you guys. Coming up is a full drive 24 7 outtakes, but first, let's check on some of the gear that makes trips like these possible. Well, mate, Morton, I tell you what, I reckon we're just about to get off before the storm arrives, but what yeah. a trip it's been. I know, mate, and I know this is not the section where we give out the Flathead Award because obviously <laughs> I, I, I feel bad taking <laughs> You've it. You've got so the flattest of heads off it. So I reckon we should go through some of the gear we've used that's to a good make idea, this possible, mate, because there's been a lot of gear that's really helped us on this one. 100%, I'll start Bridgestone tyres, I run them on. All my vehicles, absolutely every single one of them, they've just never let me down. It's as simple as that, mate. And I reckon if you're going to be going all over Australia like we do, whether you're on Morton Soft Sand or whether you're in the top end, the Kimberley, the Cape, got to have good rubber. Quick mention for Snatch Clothing, mate, because we've been using and testing Snatch Clothing right around the country. And I'll tell you what, if it doesn't pass our test, you will never, ever see it on our online store because yep. it's got to survive the harshest of four-wheel drive conditions. It's made by four-wheel drivers, Four four-wheel drives. That's the whole motto of the company, I really. I a bit of lunch on mine, too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. You're a bit of a grub, okay. mate. If you handle, you'll handle anyone. Now, looking backwards is always handy. And when you've got a canopy on the back of your four-wheel drive, mm -hmm. you need to use your side mirrors. I've been using clear views for ages. Hey, I'm just about to put them on the Y62 as well. Yeah, awesome. I yep. wish I had a set for this one because I tell you what, you, when you've got them, you just think that's normal vision. Yep, 100%. That you can see everything. When you don't have them, you it's really terrible. understand just how much you can't see. Terrible. No, they they make such a big difference. And if you're towing, of course, yeah. you've got to have them. Another question we get asked a heck of a lot mm -hmm. is who does the maintenance on our vehicles? Yep. Because obviously they go through hell and back so many times a year. Our vehicles are probably subject to more punishment than just about any other four wheel drive out Put there. Now, we rely on Pinnacle 4x4 yeah, to guys. do all the work and maintenance on our rigs to keep yep. them going again and without them doing that maintenance i'll tell you what we would probably do about a quarter of the shows which would be broken down all around the countryside and they often drop tools and just make sure the vehicles are ready for us to rock and roll so yeah, yeah. i want to say personal big thanks the good thing about those guys is they speak full drive Lit, yeah. yeah one of the one of the big tips i want to give you guys if you've got a full -wheel drive make sure you only trust it with people who understand four -wheel drives a regular mechanic might not know the conditions you're putting these things through yep. so someone who understands four -wheel drives worth their weight in gold right yeah mate what about we finish on a high outtakes <laughs> outtakes have a laugh at this one what is that annoying noise i think they're cicadas <laughs> Well, mate, I reckon before I go pump up my tyres, yep. I want to have one quick, quick cut, quick, quick. <laughs> cast. Cast on yeah. that. I'll catch a mile on. Finally got time to get off and do something else because, you know, we're here to do stuff. And did you know that pillows were invented in 1842? I'll take care of the oysters. Yeah, Leave yeah, it to I, me. That, I know how to that, hunt for an oyster, mate. That's something you could do, I reckon. First of all, you've got to make a noise like an oyster. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. ah. <clears throat> no words are coming out. <laughs> I'm a flathead boy. Here's a sea cucumber. Oh. You're going to bite the knife? I know, give me the old knife then. I don't have an old knife. That one there, what's that black handle one? Is that a really good one? That's called a spoon. <laughs> That's good, that's what I want. Here's the camera crew. They're having a feed. Oh, yes. Ruben's on the camera. Fire Budget out with it. Budget cuts. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing more weird than a bromance between two blokes. It's, it's, that smells good. How'd you open your thing? Use your teeth. Did you? Yep. Okay. 
Oh, no, that's not that. No, no, no. <laughs> Hungry, mate. No faith in Sean's cooking. Don't blame him. And just get that together. <laughs> that's, that's, I didn't know. I thought that was a milk cow for a second, but. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta keep your socks on. Get it off you guys, right? Put it on your nose. If you need a hand landing or whatever you call it, call me up. <laughs> yeah. Right, landing. Loud. <laughs> I get nervous, I just so grab. Nice. Yep. All right, mate. What do you reckon? We've been. <laughs> Weird little spasm. <laughs> Ready? All right, that is looking good. Didn't cut that out, Dos. That was just weird. <laughs>